everyone. Today we are going to talk about this curve right here, the volume of decaf. It looks a little bit like this with an oblique asymptote described by the equation y equals negative x, even though it doesn't look like it at all, but trust me, there is one. And it is described by the equation x cubed plus y cubed equals 3axy. And today, we are going to find the area of this loop right here, which we have shaded in red. So let's see, how can we do this? Well, it might be a good idea to use an interval, but normal intervals, Cartesian intervals, namely, give you the area enclosed by the curve and the x-axis. But here we have the area of a loop. So this means this might be a, it might be a good idea to switch from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. So let us do just that. So first, we'll transform our equation x cubed plus y cubed equals 3axy into polar coordinates. So how can we do that? Well, I would like to take a look at the Cartesian plane. So this is y axis, x axis. So let's pick a point P in the plane with coordinates x and y. So let's draw the perpendicular. So this is y and this is x. Next, we'll draw the segment connecting the origin and P. This segment will have a length R and will make an angle of theta with the positive x-axis. So the, po uh, the polar coordinates of P are R comma theta. So this means that from this diagram, we can see that applying trigonometric ratios, we get that x equals R cosine theta and y equals R sine theta. So, let us substitute these two equations into our, equa our Cartesian equation for the volume of decaf. So we get x cubed, it seems I have it on marker shorter, so there we go, x cubed, which is r cubed cosine cubed theta plus r cubed sine cubed theta is equal to 3a times r times r, which is r squared, times sine theta cosine theta. Good. And now we'll divide both sides by r, by r squared, leaving r, r, and nothing in the process. And then we can just have to have an r and divide both sides by cosine cubed theta plus sine cubed theta to find that r will be equal to 3a sine theta cosine theta all over cosine cubed theta plus sine cubed theta. And next, to find the area of our loop right here, I would like to take a look at a formula that will be very, very useful. The area of, the area enclosed by a function in polar coordinates. So, the area will be one half times the interval from theta one to theta two of r squared d theta. What this means is that if you have a function, a polar function, r equals some r of theta, and you want to find the area enclosed by this functions, by this function, the two lines, theta equals theta one and theta equals theta two, this area right here, well, you can use this formula. So let uh, so. First of all, we need to know what our what are our bounds of integration. What are the theta values over which we are integrating? Well, we we'll like to observe that the loop crosses itself at the origin. So, if we are at the origin, it means that the distance from the origin is zero, which means r is equal to zero. So, if r is equal to zero, then since the numerator must be equal to zero under the condition that the denominator is not equal to zero. So let's see. If 3a sine theta cosine theta is equal to zero, 3a can never be equal to zero, which means it leaves us with sine theta cosine theta being equal to zero. So this leaves us with two options. Sine theta is equal to zero or cosine theta is equal to zero. So if sine theta is equal to zero, then it means that theta must be equal to zero. We will, we will ignore all the multiples of pi and everything. 
And likewise, if cosine theta is equal to zero, then theta is equal to pi over two. Again, we'll ignore all the plus or minus multiples of pi, two pi or something. So, now we have our two bounds of integration and we have our formula integral of r. So we are ready to integrate. But before we do that, I would like to simplify our formula for r a tiny little bit by dividing the numerator and the denominator by cosine cubed theta. So in other words, multiply the fraction by 1 over cosine cubed over 1 over cosine cubed. So what this leaves us with is, let's see, in the denominator we get cosine cubed over cosine cubed, which is 1, plus sine cubed over cosine cubed, which is tangent cubed, tangent cubed theta, and then 3a. Okay, so now cosine theta over cosine cubed theta is just 1 over cosine squared theta, but then sine theta, uh, 1 over cosine squared is just 1 over cosine theta times 1 over cosine theta. Sine theta over cosine theta is equal to tangent theta. 1 over cosine theta is secant theta. So we'll have a secant theta, tangent theta, in the numerator. And this will make, uh, this will make um, things a little bit easier to integrate. So now that we have everything, we can plug, these, uh, plug what we have into this formula right here. Therefore, our area will be equal to one half times the integral from zero to pi over two. So the integral from zero to pi over two of r squared. And there's a plane going by. And there are a lot of things that go by close to my house. I don't know what, why that, that is. Okay, so squaring r. So we get 9a squared with a 3a squared times secant squared theta tangent squared theta all over 1 plus tangent theta 1 plus tangent cube theta sorry all things squared d theta and now we can just take the 9a squared term out so we'll get a 9a squared over 2 in the front 9a squared over 2 and now for this integral I would like to introduce a substitution namely you will let some u be equal to 1 plus the tangent cubed of theta which means du will be derivative of 1 is 0 derivative of tangent cubed theta is just 3 tangent squared theta times secant squared theta d theta don't forget to use the chain loop so we have a secant squared theta, tangent squared theta in the denominator, just like our du, but what we need is a 3. And we know that 9 is nothing but 3 times 3, so we can split that 9 into 3 times 3 and bring one of those 3s inside the integral and we're ready to apply our substitution. So, so we'll be left with 3a squared over 2 times the integral of... Okay, so... If we plug in 0 into here, we get 1 plus 0, which is 1. And then we plug in pi over 2. As theta goes to pi over 2, tangent theta goes to infinity. Infinity cubed is infinity. 1 plus infinity is infinity. So infinity here. And we get 1 over u squared du. And now, things are pretty easy to integrate. So, 3a squared over 2 times, well... 1 over u squared is just u to the minus 2. Use the power rule. We get u to the minus 1 over minus 1, which is negative 1 over u. Evaluate it as 1 at infinity. As, as u goes to infinity, 1 over u goes to 0. So we'll be left with 0 minus minus 1 over 1, which is just 1. So overall, our answer is 3a squared over 2. Therefore, the area of this loop from the volume of Descartes is exactly 3a squared over 2. That's pretty nice if you ask me. So, this is your video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.